Okay, so this video will be an overview of fermentation. If you're looking for a more detailed explanation, if you read in the description box below, there will be a link to a more detailed version of fermentation that I've previously made. So this diagram kind of summarizes what we're going to be talking about today with the process of fermentation. So let's look at this in a little more detail. Okay, so this video is really going to be a lot about making energy. And sometimes our cells make energy when oxygen is present. That is called aerobic respiration. And sometimes our cells have to make energy without oxygen. That's called anaerobic respiration. But as far as making energy goes, it all starts with glycolysis. So in my cell, here's a molecule of glucose. And through the process of glycolysis, the glucose will be broken down into a couple molecules of pyruvates. Again, that's, a, that's what happens during glycolysis. Well, what happens next depends. There's two pathways. One pathway leads directly into the mitochondria, and one pathway the pyruvates kind of stay in the cytoplasm. Well, in the mitochondria, this is the aerobic pathway. If there's oxygen present, the pyruvates enter the mitochondria. And then that's when the Krebs cycle will occur, followed by the electron transport chain. So when you add up the energy, or the ATP, created through glycolysis, plus the Krebs cycle, plus the electron transport chain, you get about 36 molecules of ATP. But sometimes oxygen's not available. And let's follow the arrow to the right. Let's follow the anaerobic pathway. This is the process that happens when there's no oxygen. This is the process known as fermentation. The pyruvates will go through fermentation and be broken down into lactic acid or ethanol, depending on the type of fermentation. And when fermentation is finished, a molecule abbreviated NAD will be, will be created, and the NAD helps to break down a new molecule of glucose to restart glycolysis. So let's look at this a little more closely. So as I said a moment ago, glycolysis is really the beginning of this energy-making process. And glycolysis is the breakdown of glucose. And this occurs in the cytoplasm of cells. So after a meal, the glucose that you digest enters your bloodstream. And then here's a molecule of glucose diffusing into a cell, into the cytoplasm of a cell. Let's zoom on in and take a closer look. And there's the glucose, that ring of six carbons bonded together in a hexagon form. Now, for simplicity, I've only drawn the glucose as a ring of six carbons. It also has 12 hydrogens and six oxygens, but again, for simplicity, I just drew the six carbons to focus on and to uh, kind of abbreviate glucose. And so what happens? Well, here's that molecule of glucose that, uh, that we received from our food, and it's going to be broken down by enzymes. And I like to illustrate animated scissors uh, to be symbolic of enzymes. And what the enzymes will do will break down glucose molecules. And when that happens, a couple molecules of ATP are created. This is the cell's energy. This is uh, the kind of the point of glycolysis, is to make these molecules of ATP. Notice you also have two molecules of pyruvate. I've also labeled them the broken pieces of glucose. Because once glucose is broken apart, it's not glucose anymore. These broken fragments are called pyruvate. And what happens is if oxygen is present, these pyruvates will go to the mitochondria where the Krebs cycle will occur and then the electron transport chain. But this video is going to follow what happens when oxygen is not present. The pyruvates are going to stay in the cytoplasm and fermentation is going to happen. So let's talk about the two kinds of fermentation. The first being lactic acid fermentation. And this is the fermentation performed by the human body and other animals such as bears and also performed by many types of bacteria. After all, it's the bacteria species that do lactic acid fermentation that, it, that gives sourdough bread its unique flavor. We also use bacteria to, that do lactic acid fermentation in the process of fermenting cucumbers in order to make pickles. 
and we also use uh, bacteria that do lactic acid fermentation in the production of yogurt. You know, yogurt has a very sour taste to it, and that's because of the lactic acid produced by the bacteria that, uh, that, that do lactic acid fermentation. And so lactic acid fermentation occurs in the cytoplasm. And it occurs when cells are not receiving enough oxygen in order to perform the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain. And, and this happens in human cells, particularly in muscle cells. And you might think, well, how come our cells aren't getting enough oxygen? Well, in our animation, we have a person, you know, running. During exercise, your muscles need a lot of ATP because they're working really, really hard. So the solution might be, well, why doesn't our cells just take some of the stored glucose that we have, break it down to make more ATP, that way our muscles can have ATP and they can keep working. Well, that would be great if oxygen was abundant. However, there's a new problem here. During heavy exercise, your muscles are actually oxygen deprived. And even though you're breathing heavy, you're clearly breathing heavy, you're sucking in a lot of oxygen, the oxygen's just not getting to your muscles. Well, you could stop. You could stop your exercise, but that kind of defeats the purpose. You know, especially if you're in the middle of a sporting contest, you're not going to just stop and let the other team, you know, run away with the ball. You're going to keep pushing yourself. So we can't really just stop. We're going to have to keep going. So the solution is what's called lactic acid fermentation. So let's talk about this. So here's an overview. There's the two pyruvate molecules that we saw broken. That means glycolysis must have just ended. So what happens now that glycolysis is finished? Well, those pyruvates, both pyruvates are going to be broken down into lactic acid. And this is what causes muscle soreness during you know, um, physical exertion and, and heavy exercise. So there's my animated scissors representing enzymes, and what they do is they cause this pyruvate to be broken down into lactic acid. And in the process of doing that, a molecule abbreviated NAD plus is created. That's really important, and you'll see why in a moment. Here's another pair of animated scissors representing enzymes, and the other pyruvate is being broken down into lactic acid as well. But notice what's really important here is the formation of these NAD plus molecules. This is a molecule by the name of nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. And what NAD is responsible for is restarting uh, glycolysis. And so one thing I want to stress is that zero, zero molecules of ATP were created. That's not why fermentation is important. Fermentation is important because it makes NAD, which can restart glycolysis. So now that lactic acid fermentation is finished, the lactic acid is released as a waste, and the molecules of NAD are left over in the cytoplasm. Here comes a new molecule of glucose. And so now we see why the NAD is important, is it can help to break down that glucose to restart glycolysis. And so how much AT was, ATP was created through fermentation? Zero. But, but now that we have a new molecule of glucose, how much ATP will be created through glycolysis? What the NADs will do is help break down glucose, therefore, two more molecules of ATP can be created. And this amount of energy uh, can help to prolong your physical exertion, to help prolong your exercise that you're performing. Well, let's take a, a break from talking fermentation. Let's just focus for a quick moment on, you know, recovering from a hard exercise. After exercise, you're probably really sore, and so one great way to help recover from that is through massage whether you use a professional masseuse or you use a foam roller and you just roll your muscles over that foam pad that you see in the picture, massage is a great way to help your muscles recover from exercise. As is, you know, eating foods like bananas which are high in potassium. Potassium is really important in your muscles ability to stretch and contract. So after a hard workout, eating a banana is a great way to help recover. 
Also, properly hydrating, not just during your activity, but before the activity even begins. You don't want to be dehydrated and then, you know, run a race. So properly hydrating before, during, and after is crucial in your recovery from your activity. And finally, a post-stretch. You know, a lot of teams and a lot of people know to do a pre-stretch before the activity, but sometimes we don't do the post-stretch. And stretching afterwards is just a great way to help recover from a hard workout. Well, let's get back to talking about fermentation. Well, there's another type of fermentation. The other one is called alcoholic fermentation. And this is the fermentation uh, often performed by yeast, which is a type of fungus, and even some plants. And so through the actions of yeast, we're able to create alcoholic beverages. And uh, various types of bread. I mentioned sourdough earlier is created from a type of bacteria that does lactic acid fermentation, but most breads are created through alcoholic fermentation. And so this type of fermentation also occurs in the cytoplasm of, let's say, yeast cells. And so what happens is, well, here's a couple pyruvates. That means glycolysis must have just ended. So now that glycolysis is finished and we have these two molecules of pyruvate, what happens next? Well, those pyruvates are going to be broken down into a, an alcohol by the name of ethanol also some carbon dioxide will be created. So in order to break down the pyruvates we need some enzymes and there's my animated scissors. And in the breakdown of pyruvate three things were created. Ethanol, which is an alcohol, a molecule of NAD, and some carbon dioxide waste was created. And so again as we said earlier it's that NAD that's going to allow glycolysis to restart. But let's actually see that one more time with the pyruvate on the right. There's our enzyme that's going to help break down the pyruvate. And notice how three molecules are created. A molecule of ethanol, a molecule, another molecule of NAD, and another carbon dioxide was created. Again, I want to stress, zero ATP was created. But uh, alcoholic fermentation is important because of the NAD that was created. And so what happens now that the alcohol has been created, it's released as a waste, as is the carbon dioxide released as a waste. And in comes another molecule of glucose. This glucose, with the help of NAD and various enzymes, can be broken down during the act of glycolysis. So again, if I were to ask you how much ATP was created through fermentation, well, the answer is zero. But now that a new molecule of glucose has, has been taken in, now that the cell has some NAD, if I were to ask how much ATP can be created through glycolysis, the answer should be two molecules of ATP. So as we wrap up, I just want to do a compare and contrast. Lactic acid fermentation on the top, alcoholic fermentation on the bottom. They're both going to start with a molecule of glucose. And in lactic acid fermentation, what happens first is glycolysis. That glucose molecule is broken down into two pyruvates through the process of glycolysis. Well, what happens next? Those two pyruvate molecules undergo lactic acid fermentation and are broken down into two molecules of lactic acid. In the process of doing this, a couple molecules of NAD are created. The NAD helps to restart glycolysis and break down another molecule of glucose. Well, now let's look at alcoholic fermentation on the bottom. It, too, starts with a molecule of glucose. And also glycolysis will occur and that glucose molecule will be broken down into two pyruvates. Well, what happens with those two pyruvates? They go through alcoholic fermentation and the two pyruvates are broken down into two molecules of ethanol and two molecules of carbon dioxide. In the process of that occurring, a couple molecules of NAD are created the NAD helps to break down a new glucose molecule during glycolysis. And I hope you're seeing the importance of fermentation. Even though zero ATP is created, 
fermentation allows glycolysis to restart and every time glycolysis is performed the cells will benefit by making two molecules of ATP. So there you have it. There's a hopefully an overview of fermentation. If you're in my class, you know, pause the video and try to answer these questions. I'm happy to check your answers before class or after class one day. Thanks for watching.